Hey everybody, Sean Tierney here from the Automation Blog and School, and in this episode of the Automation Podcast, I sit down with Rockwell Automation's Ji Hong to learn all about Connected Components Workbench version 13. Ji Hong, thank you for coming on the show to talk to us about version 13 of Connected Components Workbench. I had some time to play around with it, and I'm pretty excited to share um, what's new in this version of the software. So um, if you could just stop, maybe just introduce yourself and we can jump right into the product. Hi, Sean. You're right. Um, so thank you so much for having me on the show. And uh, my name is Ji Hong. Um, I'm the product manager for the Connected Components Workbench. And just in March 2021, we released version 13 of this software. I can begin on Connected Components Workbench. So uh, Maybe just before we start on the software, um, just like to talk very, very briefly about the microcontrol system. So in this way, um, I, I believe from there, um, everyone will be able to appreciate what um, the connected component for bench is. Right. So the microcontrol system consists of uh, many devices, uh, many, and, and it helps customer to build their machines or standalone machines from small machines to a large machine right so and and within such a machine there would be a controller which is the micro 800 controllers um the power flex drives um, namely maybe the components drive like the power flex 520 um the panel view 800 hmi and and even maybe in some of the machines that would be safety relays so in this case would be the cr30 and understanding about this wide range of devices um, I think we can start to appreciate that the uh, connected component workbench software, it's integrated. So it is the single software. It provides the integrated development environment for this entire microcontrol system. Okay. And like I've mentioned before, um, to, to, to help customers for their wide range of machines, um, the various applications could be like adhesive labelers, uh, material handlings, and um, even in waste, uh, water and wastewater applications where, where you have the pumping and compressors and all this, um, the micro control system could um, essentially help and simplify a lot of these needs. Right. And for connected components workbench, uh, we have two versions, the standard edition as well as the developer edition. So the um, standard, I think a, a few key points here would be Standard edition is the free for download, uh, whereas for the developer edition, it's, um, it's a paid software. And in both of this software, um, we have the Micro 800 simulator. So the Micro 800 simulator has been around since um, 2019. So it is a simulator where um, you can run your program virtually on your PC. And, and it really, really provide this platform where um, at, as a user, you could easily test your code before downloading. You could easily um, run the program even without any hardware. Yeah, we've uh, we've covered that yep. on the show, mm. and it's it's a yep. really a really nice integration, and that you get it for free, even though it only runs for ten minutes. You get it for free in the standard edition. It's still yes, really cool. nice to have that emulation, especially we we have a lot of people who are learning on their own time. You know, they're electricians, technicians, and so they want to go home and in the evenings they want to, you know, learn. And uh, it's very helpful for them to be able to, you know, put some code in and simulate it. So that was a great addition to, I think, was it version 12 that that was added? Yes, correct. This in version 12 um, launched in 2019. Excellent. Yep. Yes. And and yes, for, for I think for today's topic of the show, it's, it's namely on version 13, right? And so this this is a full list of the um, new features that is in version 13. Um, we had a leap year, 2020, there was no launch. So this year in V13, um, there was a huge list of improvement that we have for V13. So up on the list, the first item is, is, is definitely something that we want to point out is the improved performance of the software. So we have an, an improved download and build time performance. Um, with that, it comes an enhanced run mode change. So this, this for some, would known as the online edits. Um, including into the performance improvement, 
we have a new global and local variable data grid. So this this you will see in in, in later parts. It um, there's a much more modern layout, modern grid, and and a lot more um, value adding features for users. Right. Um, the next thing for CCW it is the um, controller organizer view. So this is an add on for the logics team that was done in version twelve. Right. So in version twelve, we've incorporated a logics team for CCW, and in that, when you change the team, you actually change the the um, letter editor. So some of the the items within the letter editor will change, um, so that you have more familiarized. Uh, for those who are more familiarized with the Studio 5000 site, um, when they go into Logics team, um, that letter editor will look familiar to them. And in V13, we have we have taken a step further in 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 having this Logics team. So controller organizer view is something very similar to Studio 5000. So um, it breaks down in the different programs on the left side of CCW. Right. So um, other than that, in the remaining items, there are there are a few things that will start to in, improve the um, graphical interface of, of CCW. Um, new features like product lifecycle status, so users would know what is the lifecycle status of the controllers that they are using right now. Um, we have also the improved find and navigate, so um, users could just easily press the control F key in the keywords and click find, and it would bring them there with a link, right? And and because CCW not just support the micro 800 controllers, um, we also have to point out some of the new improvement that we have done for the Panelview 800, um, as well as the PowerFlex drives, right? Uh, one of the key things for Panelview 800 is the ability for animation right now. And for PowerFlex drive, I would say are the uh, new PowerFlex that has been supported within V13. Right. Um, so right now, I will first start with the CCW V13 software enhancement. Okay. So um, the first thing to note, uh, first thing to point out, like I mentioned, is the improving performance. So uh, within our tests, within our development tests, um, the the various test case that we have, <coughs> uh, we notice an improvement of up to thirty percent for project file download as well as project file build operations. So within our test cases, we try, we had multiple test cases. So we have the large, medium and small, or, or uh, with different variables, uh, different quantities of POUs within a project. So all this is to test and very uh, validate. This improvement does bring this additional time save for the customers. That's excellent. Right. Um, and the next thing that we do have is the run mode change. So with the improve in software performance, um, part of it will relate to run mode change. So when you do online edits right now, uh, we have two um, options for users. So it depends on whether they choose to download the project source code. Um, and so with, with the options to download the, op um, the project source code, they would be able to test as well as discard the edits that they have made. If they choose not to download the project source code, um, the changes that they make would be reflected immediately. So it means user will just need to press accept, um, and this would provide a faster and more dis and more decisive edits for for advanced users. I would say for users who knows what they are doing yeah. and who just want to make the changes quick. Okay. So yes, so the, the next improvement that we have um, is the new grid. So for V13, as a first rollout, uh, we have this big improvement for our global and local variable data grid. So right now it's more uh, modern looking. It's it's a sort of a web-based technology. So meaning mm -hmm. to say we can do a lot more customization, right? So um, like before we can change the columns, you can change the arrangement of the columns and you will be safe automatically. Um, you can do sorting, ascending, descending, and default. Um, you can right click on the table and do a quick decoration. So 
the quick declaration creates multiple variables and with the same prefix or suffix mm. and the data type. So you can choose zero to one, um, zero to 10, sorry, or zero to 100, up to you. There's, there's uh, practically no limit to the number of new variables you can create with this. Right, um, and the next one for data grid is also the bit addressing. So right now for all integer type, uh, there is a small gray arrow beside the variable where you can drop down and have a look at the status of the individual bits. Right, so that and also last but not least, one of the most um, um, exciting things that we have added for our data grid is the filters. So when we open the uh, local variable or global variable data grid right now, uh, we have a, a um, row at the top where you can key in filters. So if you have a long list of variables within your grid, mm -hmm. um, you can do filters by name or by data type, by comments or by alias. So all these four um, filters are for you to um, key in. Right, so you can sort it on, you can filter it by name and data type, and then you can easily cross one of the filters out just with a cross at the top. Nice. Right, so, mm -hmm. so did this actually help to um, help users who have a long list of um, variables to search for their, the one that they are looking for and make the changes as required. And for this one is the control organizer view. So this is one of the um, features that you have talked about just now. So um, like I mentioned in V12, we did a logic team. Um, in V13 right now, we take a step further and we are making a controller organizer view. Right. So um, in this case, uh, it, it allows user to have a familiar programming environment. So it's very similar to Studio 5000. Um, the and and the user could switch it back to the project organizer, which is the default, and also with the default team. So the view would change automatically depending on the teams that they have chosen, or um, they could easily choose a logics team, and from the toolbar they can choose to use a project organizer. So it's totally up to them to customize. But as a default for CCW, we make it easier. Each time you choose logics team, you would have the controller organizer. And each time you choose default, you have the project organizer. Right. Um, and within the controller organizer, the term, the terminology that we use for each of the items, um, like routines, tasks, interrupts, are very similar to the logics environment. And the, the thing about this organizer view is that um, changes edits that you have made in this organizer view, in the controller view, um, it would reflect the same in the project organizer view. So whatever changes you make in one team, it would automatically be updated and reflected in the other team. When I first played with this theme, the, lo the new logics uh, view theme, Mm -hmm. You know, having used it previously, I thought it was very helpful to have the ladder logic come out of that IEC look and come into the logics look, especially for instructions like, uh, you know, math instructions and whatnot. Um, yep. Timers, mm -hmm. timers, you know, very nice to see them look like a timer inside of logics. But but um, when 13 came out and I looked at this, I was kind of blown away by the fact that I could create. You know, you have the you're showing there on the screen a main task, and you know every every controller on the planet has to have a task, right? A main task. But mm -hmm. I was blown away that I could create periodic tasks like a logics controller, and I, you know, in the other view, I don't even know how you would do that. So for me, you know, as some, I, I think it revealed some new features of that were CCW was capable of that I didn't even know of, and um. I mm -hmm. think the only <laughs> downside I want the audience to know is when you do mm -hmm. switch into this new Logics theme, and yes, it does look a lot like, not 100%, but a lot like Logics or Studio 5000. Mm -hmm. 
the one thing I would want people is just keep in mind all your other devices disappear, right? They, you don't see them in the tree anymore. So if you have a Piano View 800, you have a PowerFlex Drive, those are kind of hidden when you're in this view, right? Am I correct? Yes, yes, that is true. So yes, right now, um, components like the like mentioned PV800, the PowerFlex Drive or Safety Relays uh, would not be shown in this control organizer view. So okay. it, it, it is something that we are working on in for the future release. Okay, so they just have to but, you yeah. just toggle back to the other view, and you'll be able to see your drive and your panel view. It's still there. Yes, correct. Okay. Yep. Excellent. Yep. The, yes. All right. Um, yes, and and for this is um, really to to help customers. Um, this uh, this new feature that we have is the product lifecycle status of the Micro 800 controllers. Um, right now, I've been uh, in V13 is only for the Micro 800 controllers. Um, what it does for this feature is it provides an up-to-date lifecycle <laughs> status um, on the controllers that has been chosen. So remember when we go into Add Device um, and we choose a certain controller right now, below that image of the controller, we will be able to see whether it's active or active mature or is it going end of life. So, so this is really to help um, customers to stay in touch, uh, stay up to date in a single place um, to know what are the products that is going that may need their attention because of life cycle. Right. Um, we are expanding this feature to the rest of the devices, uh, but um, this is looking at uh, the our future release. For V13 right now, we are looking at only micro 800 controllers. Now, I want to ask a question. I think this is a very cool feature, but my only concern oh, right. is mm -hmm. um, how, like, I'd be concerned that I don't want to have to download Proposal Works to have this update because that's a very large download. Does this have its own small little download that, that's, like, I don't have to download Proposal Works or the Product Selection Toolbox to get this mm -hmm. to work? Yeah, yeah. So, so for this um, product lifecycle information, um, you can easily just update it through the CCW itself. So okay. under the tool, under the toolbar tools, um, you just click on product lifecycle info update. Um, we, we even have an option where you can check a box where it will automatically update every 90 days. Okay. So yeah, um, if, if you want to do just one manual update right now, you can just click update. And if you choose or if you want the software to automatically reach out every 90 days, and, and this and for this is an API that connects directly to our PCTC database. Okay. So yeah, it is as recent or as up to date as when we update PCTC. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Yep. And the next thing that we have for CCW is the find and navigate also the um, document generated. So in this release, we make some uh, improvement to the find results. So right now, when you key in the keywords that you want to find, uh, when you click on find all, uh, the find result will actually give a link that you can easily just uh, nice. click on it and bring you there straight away. The And one of the good thing or cool things I would say is that it the find within the scope or find where changes according to which team you use. So if you are in the logics team, the, the words that you see would be like tasks or uh, routines. Mm. But And then when you go into default team, um, the wording will change, right? So things, this icon, these selections would change according to which team you're at and as well as which, um, where your mouse is focused on at that moment. Excellent, nice. Okay. So, yep, um, that is the, um, some of the key highlights for the software improvement. Right, so uh, moving to Panel View 800, we have a list of um, improvements as well. Uh, but I think I, I'll just highlight a few, right? So we have an object explorer view right now. So this, this greatly um, simplified the, the object selection and how user can view or not view certain items, um, the animation, and um, the improved application load performance. 
So these are all in V13 right now. So one of the things that I would like to highlight is um, some of you may notice that um, within the PV800 configuration page, you would see the catalog of uh, 5069L306 catalogs. There's the Compact Logic 53800 controllers. Um, so there's a point note, um, the support or the feature is not fully complete. So um, users will not be able to use it. The full complete feature will come in Q3 of calendar year 2021, where because this feature, yeah, this this feature will need a firmware update on the PV800 side as well. So you will see it right now in CCWV13, but um, just take note, you will not be able to use that connection yet. Okay, that's good to know because it's some. I know it's it's oftentimes we see a feature in the software. We assume the hardware mm -hmm. firmware is re ready, and it's it's important <laughs> to note that that's not always the case. We used to run into that with redundancy a lot, where there was always a redundancy checkbox, but you always have to wait for a new firmware to come out to support it. So that's a very good point. Thank you for pointing that out. Yes. Can I, and, and let me ask you a question mm -hmm. on that while we're on that. Um, mm -hmm. I've been following the Panel View 800. We have some here at the uh, Insights and Automation, and I've been following mm -hmm. um, its development today, right? Can you tell me about 5370 support? I think initially it was just the L1. What, do you know what the Panel V800 supports today for the 5370s? Is it all 5370s? Um, I have to confirm with that, but um, if I'm not wrong, I, I think it's L1 and L, L1, L2, and L3 as well. Okay. But okay. yeah, yeah. So, so this one, I, I would need to check and come back to you. Okay. Sorry about that. No, no. Mm. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, moving into the PV800 side. So yes, so this, the first one that I would like to show is the Object Explorer view. So right now we have this um, little windows that, that could pop up and then it will show all the items and all the graphics that you have on PV800. Uh, that, that you have designed on the screen and you can choose to lock the item, unlock the item or um, you can even vibrate. So let's say I select a, an image oh, cool. or a, a tank and because your screen is so congested, you, you are not able to find where that gauge is at that moment. You just select your gauge, click on vibrate and you will notice that the image of the gauge that you have selected will be vibrating on your screen. So yeah, it, it helps you to identify and locate that particular image you're looking at. Now, when I lock, when I lock an item, like let's say I lock mm -hmm. data entry underscore one, does, yes. is that just from being able to move it around or is that from being able to edit it as well? In other words, can I still edit the object if it's locked or if it's locked, is it can't be nothing done with it? Uh, the, the lock is uh, mainly for the movement. Okay, good. So, yes, yeah. So, so it prevents any accidental movement um, of a, a, an image or a graphic that we have put on the screen. This is excellent. This was such a huge addition to View Studio. I was very glad to see oh. it. Very glad to see it added ah. to CCW. <laughs> yeah, that, that's good to hear as well. Um, yeah, and, and of course, the, the next thing we have is the visibility. So, it, it's, an eye, it's an icon of an mm -hmm. eye beside the image that you have, or beside the name, sorry. Um, and you can actually turn on or turn off on the screen. Now, is that just for development, or would that carry through to when you download? That is for development only. Okay, good to know. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Okay, and the next one we have is um, enhanced capability. So right now we have the system, um, the PV800 is able to support um, system text from the Migrate 800, so uh, meaning to like the global <coughs> variables from directly from the Migrate 800 controllers. Nice. Right. And the last one uh, that, that I would want to point out for PV800 is the design station, um, is the animation, sorry. So right now, um, we are able to allow user to animate the object. So like, for example, if we are feeling a bottle uh, in a bottle filling application, you can actually just um, animate the bottle going on the conveyor from left to right uh, with just a click of a few 
check boxes. So you don't need to animate one by one, but you can just put um, and enable the animation to move from left to right. That would be really cool. Do we used to do this with um, multi-state indicators and we'd have like the bottle filling, we just have multiple images. So you're mm -hmm. saying I can do like a left to right animation now, the height tag. The... So, so, so I can do height, horizontal position, vertical position, visibility and width. So I can do visibility too. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Yes. So th these are the, some of the improvement that we have done for this, right? Okay, and then for the next one would be on the power flex. Um, we can so so yeah so just to mention because V13 have a um, is a, we had a leap year in 2020 we did not release um, CCW version but the profiles the power flex profiles does um, continue to come up with new updates right so for them they have multiple new updates and right now this option or the profile is easily available on the PCDC website. So when we when you choose to download CCW, um, it is part of the option that you can download. So previously you would need to go PCDC, um, search for the PowerFlex drive that you're looking at, um, and then from there you download the profile. But right now from CCW itself, when you download the software, you can download the profiles as well. So that just gets all PowerFlex, all the PowerFlex supported by CCW, it grabs them all? Yes, correct. Okay. And it's, it, it will be the most up-to-date as well. Awesome. Great. Um, yeah, some, so some of the new device support, it's like the PowerFlex 6000T medium voltage drive. Um, and then we have the 755T low voltage drive as well. Um, and that is here, right. So, so there, there's some improvement on the drive side, um, new interface, new predictive maintenance interface for the 755 drive. Right, so it, it's more updated, it's much more easier for customer to understand what they're looking at. Um, and yes, the, I think this would be the last one um, on PowerFlex. So this is something that has been um, informed to us multiple times. Um, it's the ability to print or export the parameters, the drive parameters to a CSV file mm, or print yeah. to PDF. Yes. Yeah, so I, <laughs> I, I understand that um, it was um, taken out somewhere in V12. Um, oh, right. So yeah. So so right now it's been in uh, it's put back. I was it put back um, in V13. Um, and yeah, users would be able to download, uh, print, and export the parameters of the drives. Okay, and towards the end of the slides, I just want to mention um, one of the key platforms that Rockwell have is on course. So previously, it's known as RACBI. So in here, we have, uh, I think it was um, recently rebranded called on course. And within that is a virtual platform. Um, it works very well with our micro simulators as well. So what it does in this platform is you'll be able to log in. Um, request for a uh, request for an instance, and then you can log in. Uh, once you log in, there will be very uh, multiple labs that you can go to. Three of them that I, I want to point out here is the three of the virtual applications that was done. So, what the virtual application is is uh, we have a micro control system demo box virtual and a virtual application. So in this case, we have bottle filling. We have the vertical form view seal application, as well as the our most recent is the remote water pump application. So, with three with these three application, um, you do not need hardware, you do not need software. So what you need is is really just a browser, um, log in the instance, and then access the lab. So with the lab, you will learn things like the introduction and basic programming. Um, PID and PID tuning, UDFB, as well as advanced programming like structure text, function block, and how to use the interrupt. So these are some of the ways that we are doing um, to, to enrich the whole learning experience. So it will not just be a textbook and lab. Um, this, this actually gives you something that is more interactive. The buttons on the demo box are 
I would say clickable. You can actually click and you can also um, intentionally set a wrong reading and you will see the errors reflected. So the bottle will be overfilled um, or a, the packet of cookies will be underfilled, burn is not filled or the tank goes empty. Right, so, so this is a very fun way of learning CW and also to understand the microcontrol system. Okay, right. So at the end is a long list of the full list of um, literatures, documents that we have to support the learning of CW. Excellent. Um, yes, right. So yeah, that, that's actually all from my side. To, to share on V13, right? Yeah, I know we've uh, covered yeah. the uh, sample code library. We've covered a lot of this, but um, these are some mm -hmm. great links and uh, we appreciate you sharing them with us. I think that was a great update too. Um, so looking forward to the future, we know we're going to have a firmware update for the Panel View 800 to uh, enable that um, 5380 L306 feature, right? Support. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. And then on the horizon, do you expect to announce anything at Automation Fair or can you tease anything coming down the road that, you know, the listeners should be looking out for in the, you know, towards the end of 2021? Yeah, um, I, I would say the um, other than the PV800, if you have watched our Connected Components Workbench V13 YouTube video, you, you'll see at the end there was a short teaser as well on what would be coming next, right? So. Some of the exciting thing I would say it's you will be able to see in um, the upcoming automation fair would be an improved I would say the improved micro 800 controller, right? Um, and with that also the improvement we do to um, on CCW to support that. So performance is something that we definitely will continue to work on and make it better for users, um, and then to support. Some of the new features for Migrate 800, uh, we would have a um, new feature support within CCW as well. So nice. that yes, I, I think that that would be something that would be very interesting for some of those uh, for all of those I would say uh, following on the improvement in Migrate 800 controllers. Well, Ji Hong, we'd love to have you back yes. after Automation Fair to talk about those new products. Um, I found this very yeah. interesting. I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule. I know you're halfway around the world, so thank you hey. for taking time out of your <laughs> and, and dealing with me. I'm kind of coffee deprived here. It's still early here on the East Coast, but uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. No problem. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I did. And I really want to thank G for coming on the show and bringing us all up to speed on CCW V13. With that said, if you're watching on YouTube, please consider giving us a like and a sub. And if you're listening to the audio only edition on iTunes or Pandora, Spotify, TuneIn, iHeartRadio or someplace else, please consider subscribing and giving us a like because it really helps us reach more listeners and potential guests. With that said, I want to wish you all a very happy, safe, and healthy week. And until next time, my friends, peace.